Welcome back. We've talked about a lot of different aspects of Mecca, but not yet about the various social values being passed on by Mecca. If it is true that each generation must pass on its social values to the next generation, what are the values that we see cropping up over and over in Mecca series that they think the next generation should follow? Well, I think uh, one of the primary ones is the idea of accepting social responsibility. And this goes back to that earlier idea of the Mecca as a responsibility, a job, a symbol of oncoming adulthood. The Mecca represents for the hero this idea that they now have things they need to do, even if they don't necessarily want to do those things. They've got to accept the fact that this is their job now and they have to just do this for the good of society, even if it kind of sucks for them in the short term. And again, this is very different from what you often saw in super robot shows of the 60s and 70s. Um, uh, it is a very common thing in uh, traditional stories, um, but not as uh, strong because typically the hero was already a productive member of society. The hero was already a, a full adult, you know, productive, had children and had responsibilities and so forth. Um, the adventure was more kind of the apotheosis of that. Whereas in here, it is really the hero coming to grips for the first time with the idea of responsibility. You also get the idea that you should not hold on to things because they change. This is a more um, Eastern philosophy, more uh, classically Buddhist philosophy, and I think it is perfectly encapsulated in Zeta Gundam, and particularly in Jared, namely this guy. Um, Jared keeps losing people over the course of the conflict, and it basically drives him mad. Whereas the heroes lose people, and they certainly grieve, and they certainly, you know, um, have difficulty with that, but they ultimately move on. Um, whereas Jared just will not let go of those experiences, and that really is what warps him and turns him into an ultimate villain in the show, I would argue. And I don't think it's a spoiler based on, if you've seen any of, of, of Zeta Gundam, it's pretty clear where Jared's going on that one. Anyway, um, uh, the point being that um, the characters who will not let go are typically the ones in a mecha series that have the most difficult time, who um, don't get that, to that level of, of appreciation of, of full being that you get in anime series. I think you see that a lot in Evangelion. Uh, there are characters that won't let go and very much suffer for that, whereas characters who do ultimately grow and move on are the ones who kind of, you know, um, get to the end uh, so to speak, without getting into spoiler territory. Um, also, another very important thing in Real Robot Mecha series in particular is the idea that you will change. That as a person, this experience will change you. Amuro Ray, at the beginning of Mobile Suit Gundam, is easily distracted, um, not very responsible for himself um, or for others. Um, he's not very aware of his environment. Um, and he is, certainly has a brilliant mind, but he can't really plan very well, as far as we can tell. By the end of that series, he is an excellent tactician. He is always move, you know, thinking multiple moves ahead, very aware of his surroundings. He is a, his personality has changed by the end of that series. He is not the same person he was at the beginning. Now, that doesn't mean he's a completely different person, but he is changed as a result of this. And this is something that we see that is very different in Mecha than in either Super Robot, where the hero is generally pretty static, or even in the traditional uh, myths. You know, Beowulf is the same, is, you know, behaves the same at the end of Beowulf as he does at the beginning. That's part of the points of that story, is that Beowulf is, you know, um, is consistent throughout that. The heroes in Mecha learn better behaviors over the course of their story, and they become different people, hopefully better. Um, there's also this idea of rejecting paradise, and without getting into spoilers for either of these series, um, suffice to say that in both cases, their society presents some view of paradise, which the heroes ultimately end up having to reject, or, or disagree with, at the very least, to say, no, that's not paradise, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. And I think that's a thing that you see, again, which is a much more Eastern Buddhist philosophy 
this idea that there is no Eden, there is no you know um, perfect life in this world. Uh, you have to kind of um, accept uh, reality for what it is, as opposed to trying to find some ideal life in the future. And I think it's I think it's something that uh, we definitely benefit from being reminded of. Um, finally, um, I think we see the um, another idea, which is quite simply the idea of riding the chaos, as I would call it. This idea that, um, and it's related to, to the to the earlier one, but this idea that, uh, and several of the other earlier ones, this idea that life comes at you, and things can feel very chaotic and feel very difficult, and the answer to that is not to reject that. Um, it is to ride that chaos. The heroes in Mecca often live in the ultimate chaos, outer space. What could be a more perfect metaphor than that? And what do they do? They do not pretend that outer space exists. They go out into the outer space and engage with it. But then they come back into their space, their home, which they have carved out, their relatively stable space within that chaos. They figure out how to both engage in it but also find stability within it. And I gotta say, what more perfect way of representing that is by having adolescents engage that by climbing into a machine and using it not from the position of the head, not from the position of the gut, but from the position of the human heart. That is how they engage with the difficulty of their world by engaging with it with humanity, by bringing the humanity to the technology of their world. That is why I believe that mecha anime provides a powerful new view of how we should behave that is useful both today and will be so in the future. Thank you for watching this. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you check out some other videos here on the channel. Um, I am Brent Newhall of GeekArchaeology.com. I have a really cool Discord. If you head there, we have some wonderful to uh, topics and conversations about uh, stuff like this. So if you want more conversations and more, uh, uh, more material like this, head by our Discord and GeekArchaeology.com. Hope to see you there.